Hi guys, it's Ray. I have everything here to start sublimation, including my new printer. I have a sub sublimation ink and a sub sublimation paper that Koala sent me. I have just a pack of six white mugs. I have an eight pack of sublimation tumblers from HTV Rant. I bought those mugs and blanks on Amazon. I finally went ahead and bought myself a tape dispenser. And I have a, it says mug press on the side, but this should do up to a 30 ounce tumbler and mugs and everything straight in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the mug press first. Um, we're going to get the printer set up today, but... Um, that's going to take a little bit. So, um, first I want to test the mug press and I'm going to do it in a different way. So I will be right back. So we're going to kind of be all over the place in how we work today. Um, I'm going to take one of the tumblers out. Um, this does come with, it was supposed to come with straws. I have one straw in this box, so... I'm probably not going to bother contacting Amazon about that because they, they come with stainless straws and I am personally not a fan of stainless straws, so um, it does come with some sublimation paper. I'm not going to use this for this project, so I just want one cup for now. I also want to get out my tape dispenser. That side will work just like a regular tape dispenser. The tumbler press. I just picked one at random from Amazon. I know that this is going to stink coming out of the box for the first several uses. It's got another pair of these heat gloves, which are just like the other pair I bought from Amazon. Probably the same exact pair, but these are important because you're going to be handling hot things. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce the brand on here. AMG KONP. I'm also not going to recommend it yet until I've used it a couple times. So, because again, I did purchase this with my own funds. So, this will be a super honest review on this. But the simple open and close. This is the heating element that does have to get plugged in over here. Um, they do these like this because you can buy different different pressing plates for them. They unscrew and this whole thing will come out. So you could have different sizes in there. Um, where did I put that tumbler? So in theory, this one is supposed to do everything up to a 30 ounce. These tumblers also come with a rubber bottom. You don't want to press with the lid on. So, that's going to need to be a little bit tighter. So, to tighten them, you crank the screws on the back down. That puts your pressure on. You want to try and get them even. You do want it snug in there. 
that's probably good enough. I say probably because I really have no idea. So, power cord. I have no idea how it works, so I'm going to probably pull out the directions. Power switch is on the side. Okay. So I did see a video on Amazon about changing the um and probably since this says don't heat it without a mug, I should probably put the tumbler in it. See, it thinks I'm done. Tells me not to use it with food. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the directions quick, figure out how to change it to Fahrenheit, and I will be back. Okay, so I sat down with Google. I sat down with everything I could possibly think of. I did figure out how to get it switched to Fahrenheit, so that's good. It did come with extra fuses. I'm going to have to not lose this tape machine thing. I'm still up in the air about, but I'm just going to go ahead and try a tumbler. Um, I do want to make sure that I am kind of even pressure. So I'm going to grab a ruler. Hopefully there's a point on the back I can check on. So I'm one mark plus 10. All right, so my pressure is even. So that's, that's the crucial part. All right. So again, it says no warming up without a tumbler. I don't know. But for this first one, I'm going to use an infusible ink sheet. I bought this pack of plaids from Amazon. I think this one will match this water slide fairly well. So I'm going to use the infusible sheet on the bottom of the tumbler. And we're just going to do this as our test run. If I mess these up, it's not going to be the end of the world because I can go over them with epoxy and it'll be fine. So, right. I'm kind of not going to stress that much about it. I'm doing this first because I'm waiting on my ink bottles to dry to load the printer because I'm not going to use the um, and I want to come above that um, where the tumbler starts to curve at the bottom just above that where it's going to lay flat. And I cut this with no overlap, which could bite me in the butt. When I'm done here, but we'll see. So I want to put a piece of heat tape on it and pull it pretty darn tight. sides together. I'm going to put another piece on, pulling it extremely tight. And one more to the top. Oh, 
also pulling it extremely tight. And to do that, I'm laying it on one side and pressing the edges together and pressing it down. And then I'm going to wrap a strip around the top to hold it down. A little bit on the cup, a little bit on the infusible sheet backing. When I actually print the sublimation, it's going to have a slight overlap on the seam, so I won't have to squeeze it quite as tight, hopefully. So, and I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. I'm going to pull it fairly tight. It over the top tight all the way around um, the way sublimation inks and things work is they take something from a solid state to a gas state and that's how it embeds itself in the substrate is in a gas state so you don't want any air pockets or anything and I don't really like the way this is laying so I'm going to put another piece of tape over that that will hopefully, hopefully help. So that's going to be that. Set that down a minute. Move this out of my way. All right. So I may have kind of figured out the settings. I'm not sure, um, but I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to hold down my OK button, P3. I'm going to change it to Fahrenheit and enter. And I believe I am on Fahrenheit now. It is heating. The heat setting is P1. And I have it at 380. I actually think I want 360. Long press will make it go fast, short press will make it go slower. And then P2 is my time. I want my time at 65. I'm gonna do 65 and rotate and do 65 more. I don't know why I'm going up and not down. There we go. Oops. So 65. So this should be heating. It's at 171 now. It should beep and alert me when it's ready. So I will come back then. I've got to go get like a hot plate and some stuff. So it does smell a little bit. I don't have any pot holders that I can spare right now because I am also cooking and yeah, I need them in the kitchen. So I just grabbed a uh, trivet and a towel. This is up to temp, so I'm going to pull. Oh my God, see I won't stop beeping. I'm gonna start it. <laughs> There's gotta be a way to change that alarm. If not, I can definitely not do this when there are other people home. But I started it with my seam this way, and when it's done, I'm gonna rotate it completely the other way because there is a gap here, and you don't want that gap not getting pressed. Some people actually recommend um, like a four phase turn and I may start doing that once I'm into 
the actual sublimation. Um, I don't know yet. I don't know how I feel about this heating up with the cup. To me, that's just odd. Um, Cause I don't think you can heat it with the cup in it because it automatically would start sublimating and you can't put the wrap on the hot cup because it'll start sublimating as soon as you start wrapping it. So, but that is my cue to turn. We're going to let it go another 65 and we will see how this comes out. Remember this paper started very dull. And we should see a dramatic color change that I'm really hoping will match up pretty well with the back of this decal that says, I am so freaking Mary. Um, we're going to immediately water slide right onto the sublimation tumbler. Not immediately, we're gonna let it cool. But we're just gonna go straight onto the tumbler before epoxy because we're just trying some things here. I'm going to bring you down. Now, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can get this off, <laughs> first of all. It's, of course, very hot, so do make sure you're wearing your gloves. You're going to get all of your tape off, if you can. Some people need a pick for this, and I probably need some kind of a pick for this. But this first piece ought to actually help lift the rest of it. Oh. Okay, so there we go. I do have a seam, which I knew I was going to. I knew I'd cut it a little short. I do have a little bit of ghosting at the bottom. In this case, I'm not going to be concerned about that because it's going to get pinstriping. But I'm actually pretty happy with the match. I feel like I could have gone a little longer or a little shorter. I know that... Um, the color of black on sublimation will be different if you overcooked it or undercooked it, but being that this is infusible ink, it might be slightly different, but um, I will take that for a first attempt. I did have a little splatter from this ink. I should really have wrapped this in a piece of paper that would have caught that splatter. Um, I know better. I know that's how this works, but I don't think I hurt the inside of the press at all, so that's the critical part. There is absolutely no splatter onto the press itself. I should have sealed the bottom better, probably, and possibly even scooched it up just the tiniest bit more. But we're going to let this cool thoroughly. We're going to get the water slide on. We're going to get um, a pinstripe on it. And we're going to finish this cup up because I'm actually pretty happy and I'm going to consider that a win. And I'm actually going to leave this video here. This was just unboxing the tumbler press and its maiden voyage. Um, this is actually cooling down quite quickly. Um, I may do black pinstripes and actually run a piece of the tape over the back side there. But... This is going to be it for this part of the video. This was just unboxing the machine. Um, other than it's a little annoying with the alarm when it warms up. It really wasn't bad. And I'm not entirely certain that you really truly have to have it heated with a mug in it. I may try heating it without. Um, just because. That's like a new sticker that a lot of these tumbler presses are putting on it. It didn't used to be there. So, we'll see. Um, 
but yeah so far so good and I will finish this cup in a separate video um, and I will try to get them up like at the same time so that is it for this the unboxing of the AMG KONP tumbler press this should do everything down to like an 11 ounce mug anything skinny up to a 30 ounce tumbler I don't have any 30 ounce sub tumblers because it didn't even occur to me that I could do one this style with a 30 ounce and not have to print large format so but that is it thank you